Go to your door tonight. You've got loads of great stuff on the way, including this. Author of his second novel, who has been at the forefront in the punk movement, will be performing his novel, Comb Boy, at the Music Cafe. Now, uh, not only uh, an author, but a musician, and also involved in performance and keeping arts alive. And the man joins us today, Clive Parker Sharp. How are you the devil are you, sir? Good afternoon, Brody. I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, good, mate. I've been looking forward to talking to you, mate. Because oh, I love to be on. I'm very grateful. Thank you. No, no, the, the, the pleasure's all mine. Because I love music. I love the era that you kind of like originate from. So this is yeah. right up my street. This is so oh, okay. Great. So, so let's go back to uh, let's go back to uh, you know when you were part of the punk movement. And when I say yeah. part of it, you Way really were, time. weren't you? I mean, you were you were right in the heart of it. That's right. I came up through punk rock. And this current show, Comb Boy, definitely draws on that, uh, both in the subject matter and the performance. Uh, I was in bands like The Members and Spiz Energy, who had a hit with Captain Kirk, then kind of moved through the new wave uh, period, uh, co-forming a band called Big Country with Stuart Anderson and Bruce Watson. Wow. So then, you know, I kind of grew up through the 90s and got more into production and the technical side and uh, writing, which led to my first book, and uh, in 2012, you know, hence the, uh, the current situation where I'm taking an, an adaptation uh, from my second book, Comb Boy on the Road. Um, you know, in a way, you know, it's interesting you should mention the, uh, the punk movement because this mm. uh, current show probably has more to do uh, with the punk days uh, than anything I've done before because it's uh, semi-autobiographical. It's kind of mash-up of people, places, and experiences from the period, uh, places and events kicking off in the 1970s about uh, a poor lad who becomes famous uh, because of the way he looks, hence the rather, you know, derogatory nickname Comb Boy and is wholly unprepared for it. So it's kind of about, you know, people I knew in the period and uh, deals with some challenging issues, um, you know, but using that punk ethic of... Uh, humour and music and poignancy well we're going to get well we're going to get to your performance because you're going to come and see us aren't you soon which is brilliant so yeah. it's uh, it's an opportunity to get to meet you and uh, and to get to know the book uh, up close and personal but what was it like to be around during that uh, during that that, that time because i yeah uh, i um, i'm all about music i host bbc introducing after eight yeah. o'clock tonight we're going to be doing you're loads of that man. kind of stuff but what's it like <laughs> back you know then being a pioneer Sarah? Sorry, say again, Brody. What was it like being a pioneer back then for you? Because that's what you were, wasn't it? I, I can't even begin to describe it in a way because it was so <laughs> different. I, I think the radical difference is uh, the lack of co connectivity back then. I think we've cut, we, you know, it's interesting you were talking about your, look at your phone uh, just before I came on. Yes. You know, it, it's uh, every <laughs> 10 minutes for most of us now. And I, I think, you know, we've got used to that connectivity. But the, the thing about punk rock is, you know, as you say, it was, it was um, pioneering. It was revolutionary. Um, but it was just you know, little groups of people all around the country who weren't connected, um, you know, who were just really brought together by, sh you know, with uh, shows like John Peel, yes, uh, later yes. night on Radio 1. Um, so, you know, it was quite disparate, and uh, all of these little groups, and it, and it started very slowly and very low-key, really. So, um, very, very different. You know, people kind of look back at it through uh, rose-tinted spectacles. Oh, of course they did. It, it, was a, it was a revolution for a reason, because music had stag stagnated so much, and, you know, people wanted to make new art, which, in a way, you know, is, is what I've always been about and what, what the, the current show is about. Yeah, it's your life, isn't it? And, and I'll tell you what, I mean, I have that, you know, this may sound uh, a little strange, but thank you for uh, paving the way, because I've lost count how many uh, bands back in the day and uh, who came following what you lot were doing and said you inspired them to do it, proof that any, not anybody could do but anybody's got the you know the um the the ambition to do it so let's talk about them your 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 um your writing what made you decide to move into that world you're all about the arts you're all about performing what made you turn into uh into into writing because it's a it's a bit of a skill to do that isn't it sure well as i mentioned before it, it kind of stemmed from the songwriting uh, i slowly moved into the you know technical side with production and writing and then songwriting became more long form. And I had an opportunity, a book deal um, in 2012 uh, for my first book. And, um, you know, it all kind of started to fall into place. And, uh, 
you know, the, the book writing has, has uh, developed and um, flourished and, you know, led to the, developed really into, into these kind of live events where I've, I've adapted parts of the Cone Boy book into a live show. Um, so, you know, it was an extension really, Brody. Well, let's talk about this show because I've got to get my head around it because it's a, you know, <laughs> because it's a, uh, you're coming to see us, Music Cafe in Stratford, yeah. 29th of this month as well, so not long to wait. But how have you, uh, have you turned this book into a live performance? How does that work? Actually, again, it, w- it was a development from some live readings and uh, they kind of turned into little drama things and uh, with my collaborator, Marshall, um, some songs started to come about and it, and it turned into a sort of rock and roll musical. And so now we have a, a fully formed show, which is a sort of, you know, mashup of drama, spoken word and music, very high octane, which, you know, as I mentioned before, was part of the, the punk thing. So, you know, I'm drawing on that, um, you know, high octane, fast um, drama sort of events that goes back to the punk movement in a way. Oh, it sounds great, mate. It's right up my street, I have to say, chap. And the other thing which is great about you, and one of the reasons I wanted to get you on tonight, uh, it's all about performance and keeping the arts alive for you as well, isn't it? We've all gone through a horrible time. This has been a passion of yours beforehand, but yeah. it, that's, uh, that's something you're really quite keen to, uh, to express, isn't it? Well, I think it's very interesting you just say that, because, you know, the music cap in Stratford-upon-Avon uh, is a brilliant venue because they have drama, theatre and live events every night, and that's kind of something that ex- is exclusive to Stratford-upon-Avon because so many venues have found it unsustainable to reopen after the mm-hmm. pandemic. And it feels kind of funny, uh, like I'm bringing Coles to Newcastle, performing drama and spoken word in the heart of Bardshire, <laughs> if you don't mind me saying. Um, but this is, you know, a folk tradition that goes right to the heart of uh, Britain, uh, telling stories through spoken word and music. So, you know, I'm very excited about, um, you know, bringing it to Stratford-upon-Avon, and it is just fantastic. We've been offered this slot by the Music Cafe. Ah, oh, it's a good, listen, you, you, it's, you're in a, the, the perfect location for it. And also, you, you, when you first came on, we spoke about Big Country, you being a founder member. You're working on a, a documentary, aren't you, at the moment for that? Actually, yes, and as always these, with these things, they seem to take forever. Oh, yeah. Um, as I'm sure you know. Oh, yeah, no, and, that's um, like... But it looks like it's something that's going to happen with Sky Arts, and, uh, you know, it's kind of going to kind of replay the punk days, and, you know, how Stuart came up through the skids. You know, we were all, we all came out of the punk movement and how that led into the formation of Big Country, and then obviously, you know, the kind of sad demise and what happened at the tail end of uh, Stuart's mm. career. Yeah, absolutely. Can I just say, Clive, I've loved talking to you, chap. I really have. I could talk to you for a lot longer, but obviously I've got Very other things I have to deal with the show on. tonight. But yeah, I think your uh, your book and uh, and the show is uh, sounds absolutely genius. So uh, once again, 29th Music Cafe in Stratford. If people want to get tickets to come and see you, Clive, what should they do? Yes, yeah, just go on the Music Cafe website. So uh, use a popular search engine <laughs> to have a look at that. And, uh, you know, we're very much looking forward to uh, getting up there and, and seeing people there. Now, Clive, will you do me a favour before we go, right? I feel like we've got to know each other. I mean, you know about my obsession with my mobile phone. You've, you, you know, oh, yeah. we're clearly paying attention to that. I mean, it can't even be away from me when I'm doing a radio show. But could you tell me, well, could you come back on when uh, the Big Country documentary is moving forward a little bit and so we can have a chat about that? Does that sound like I'd a deal? Love, I'd love to, and it's very kind of you to offer. Thank you. Mate, the door is open for you. Uh, right, Harry, producer Harry, the door's open for him. He can come back any time <laughs> he wants, right? He's a friend of the show. Clive, Parker Sharp, nice all the best, my friend. Nice to see the whites of your eyes but that, oh do you remember After those days time. do you remember those days yes <laughs> oh they were they were the good old days they were they yeah. and they will return clive i guarantee it thank you my friend that was wonderful and if you're going to see if you're going to see the show out uh, to the music cafe in stratford i'm sure you'll have a wonderful time